we're going to wind up chapter four with a discussion of the preparation of a classified balance sheet and then we'll talk about another ratio at the end. So what is a classified balance sheet? Well, and what's how is that different from the balance sheet you just prepared um, earlier in this chapter? And when you prepared the balance sheet, you had all your assets lumped together and all your liabilities lumped together. And in fact, we can sort of break down those into classifications, which is why they call it classified. And that's really all we're doing here is that we're just further uh, breaking down into separate classifications some of the uh, balance sheet accounts. And so you'll see here assets are divided into current assets and non-current assets. And they include long-term investments, plant assets, and then intangible. And we haven't really talked about intangible assets, but those are assets that we have but you can't necessarily touch. They might be trademarks, patents, copyrights, things like that. Then we have current liabilities and non-current liabilities and then our owner's equity. So items that we are going to um, either uh, use up or pay within a year are classified as current. So current assets, if we are going to use those up within a year and current liabilities, if we're going to pay that off within a year, those go into the current section. The non-current section is, by definition obviously, um, anything that is more than a year. So if we, um, take our balance sheet and this is not the uh, same set of numbers that we had worked with earlier. This is snowboarding components rather than the fast forward company. But this shows the current assets, um, cash, accounts receivable, inventory, prepaid insurance. We expect that we're going to turn those over all within a year. Now we may have situations where people owe us money, unlike the accounts receivable where we really better hope that we collect it within a year, uh, we may have longer term financing arrangements or investments where we expect them to uh, be paid off well more than a year and those are going to find themselves in the long term investment. Then we move down to uh, plant assets. and we certainly hope that all of these plant assets are going to last us more than a year. If we're buying land that we think is going to be gone in less than a year, I think we need to sort of rethink our decision similarly, uh, you know, with equipment. Um, we're not buying those things with the idea that they're disposable. Those are going to be long-term assets that we use in the business and we're going to classify those as plant assets. And then our intangible assets, would get classified separately. And again, that could be patents, copyrights, trademarks, goodwill, um, anything along those lines. We move over to the liability side and you know we have the flip side of this. Now, this is anything that we're going to be paying within a year. We're obviously going to pay our vendors on the accounts payable. We're certainly going to pay our people within a year. And any revenue that we haven't earned where customers have paid us in advance, we're going to earn that money in less than a year. So that's going to fall within the current liability section. On the other hand, we may have long-term obligations on equipment or buildings or things like that. And those are going to be listed separately from the current uh, obligations. And then we've still got our equity down here. So um, this is just going to, again, recap all of these various uh, explanations that I just gave you. So we're going to kind of fly through these. But current assets are things that are going to be sold, collected, or used within a year. Um, or the company's operating cycle, whichever is longer, but generally it's going to be a year. Uh, Long-term investments are investments that we're going to hold for more than a year. 
and plant assets are things with long lives and we anticipate that they will last us longer than a year. Uh, similarly, uh, patents, trademarks, copyrights, all of those things that we expect those to be long-term assets. Current liabilities, again, things that we will pay within a year. And then long-term would be our, our mortgages, um, long-term lease obligations, things of that nature. And then our equity is, again, it's the owner's claim on the assets. And at, at its purest form, what equity is, is if we take all of our assets and we sell them and we turn them into cash and we use that cash to pay all our liabilities, what's going to be left over at that point is the owner's equity. Um, and we don't separate that into current and non-current. And we are going to finish up with a discussion of the current ratio. So what the current ratio does is it basically tells an investor or a bank or something how good a, a shape, how, how financially healthy we are in terms of being able to have enough money on hand to pay our current liabilities. And uh, so what we do, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be money on hand, but, but it's our current assets. So we're looking at our, you know, our inventory, something we could convert to cash or cash within a year and use that to pay our current liabilities. Um, and again, it just tells lenders how good a position we're going to be in to pay our short-term debt. So we've got here uh, Walmart and Costco. And so we see two years ago. Um, and so think about this in terms of numbers and which ratio might be more favorable. So if a company had current assets of $10,000 and current liabilities of $5,000, they have double, twice as many assets that they could use to pay off that liability. And so if we just do the math, that would give us a ratio of two. And if we had, again, 50, you know, the same amount of liabilities, but 15,000 in assets, well, now we've got a current ratio of three. And that's, we're now we're, we've got three times what we need. So the higher the ratio, um, the better poised the company is to be able to meet its current liabilities um, with current assets. And so we see here that Costco has a higher current ratio than Walmart. Um, although, you know, both of them sort of had a little bit of fluctuation. Um, but Costco um, is a fair amount better than Walmart in terms of the current ratio and its ability to utilize current resources to pay current debt. And I'm actually going to stop here. Um, you guys have had enough. Preparing reversing entries is optional and you can certainly read more about it in your book, but um, it's not something that I'm going to talk about today. And so that concludes chapter four.